Hello and welcome. Uh, Photoshop just went through a major upgrade and uh, in the process of this upgrade they changed the way the refine edge dialog uh, worked uh, with selections and masks and so um, I thought I'd do a little tutorial that replicates a, an, early, an older one that I have had posted here for a while uh, just to show you how things have changed. So my goal in this uh, project is to put place this face into this background. Um, let's, let's. So profile, head, lots of wispy hair goes into this background. Okay. So um, we have a, a couple of ways of doing this, but we can you know, we can select any of the selection tools. Let's, let's assume that we're just going to make a selection. Uh, I think in my tutorial, I was showing how to do color range under the select menu. You, you go to color range. Um, and that works really great when you have like a blue screen type shot like this, where we can kind of automatically mask that off using color range. But let's, let's do something a little simpler. We'll use the uh, quick select tool. And Actually, as soon as you select any of these selection tools, you'll see you have this little button here for select and mask. So the refine edge doesn't appear uh, anymore. You get this button. And so if we click on this, we go into a whole new interface here. And you can see the whole uh, Photoshop interface has changed. Uh, we still we have kind of the properties that this this section over here on the right looks very similar to the refine edge, uh, but we have a couple different ways of, of working. We have all our tools over here have changed a bit. And right now I have the quick select tool uh, selected. And you notice that I have my my view mode is a is a new one called onion skin. Uh, so we're going to use that. And as you can see, the transparency gives you a, a, a way of differentiating between how the uh, how the image looks uh, when it's masked. So I'm going to show you this now. Here's the, the quick select tool and we're going to brush over the part of the image that we want to keep. So we're masking this off the background. It, it really does a pretty good job here. Uh, you can zoom in using all of the keyboard shortcuts that you normally use. And for instance, in this case, I want to bring uh, this, this eyelash in stronger. So I'm going to, you know, select it just by brushing over it and and now you'll notice that the quick select has done a decent job but it's still now it's missing parts of the hair and all the, the all of that so what we're going to do now is use this new tool which is the refine edge brush tool and um, this allows us to kind of brush over the important areas that we want to build a mask for so i'm brushing over now the hair wisps and it's now going to recalculate that edge and bring uh, more of these hair wisps into the selected object, which in this case is this profile. So we go and uh, I'll zoom in here also because I want to I want to kind of refine that. Um, and otherwise, it looks like it's done a pretty good job here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that so much. And all right, so now we, we're looking at, I see, I can see a little stronger blue over here. So I, I want to brush into that because I want to mask off uh, the blue background. All right, so that's uh, looking at the onion skin. And uh, if we can now replace this view with, uh, we can show it on black. And you'll see it's at 100% opacity now. Or we can show it on white. So we can see uh, that we've got a, a very nice hair edge here, but we also have a little bit of the blue background showing. Now, uh, the properties over here, this side of the dialog, shows similar things to what we had before. We have the edge detection area. We can we can put a radius up there. Uh, in this case, I don't think it's, it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and we have these global refinements. Um, sometimes, you, if you, first time you go in here, you'll see it like this. The global refinements are where we have the smooth, the feather, the contrast, shifting the edge. Uh, 
we also have these output settings here, and that's where you get the decontaminate color. Now I've found uh, actually that decontaminate color can be somewhat problematic, so I'm going to take this opportunity to show you a different way of, of recoloring uh, the edges because we're picking up a little uh, kind of color pollution from that bright blue background, and it's it's pretty much everywhere uh, all, all around the edge here. So um, I'm going to show you a different way of dealing with that. Uh, but at this point now, um, we're going to output to a selection, which would be what we would expect. Uh, we started with a quick select tool. So we're going to output to a selection. All right, so we'll say OK. And now there's our selection. And in order to turn it into a mask, I have to have a layer. Right now it's a background. So I'm going to double click this and make it a layer. OK. And click on the layer mask icon here. And my selection will go into the layer mask. And it, now you can kind of see that it's on a transparent background. I, I, one thing I want to point out here, I've changed the way my transparency looks. Uh, and you can do that from the preferences here, Photoshop preferences and transparency and gamut. Okay, so this uh, preference allows us to uh, change the grid colors. That's what I always do. So you, your your default is something like this, uh, familiar checkerboard. Uh, but as you can see, it's hard to see the detail along the edge, so you don't know how well it's really done, what kind of a job it's done there. So one thing you can do is change the, the transparent to, to a, a smaller grid that shows a bit more detail. But what I like to do also is to change the grid colors, which you can do by simply clicking on one of the patches. And then I'm looking at this grid arrangement up here, and I'm just going to make this a little bit darker so that it almost matches this new color almost matches the the other uh, patch here so that they almost sort of merges I usually leave just enough to see that there's a little bit of a checkerboard there so I know that this is representing transparency but see now you can really see all the detail uh, in the hair edge okay so so now we have uh, we have our subject mask but I'd like to deal with this this kind of color pollution that's along the edge and um, that's what the decontaminate color is from the dialog but I like to do it manually because you actually get a little bit better result and the way to do this is I'm going to make an empty layer here I'm going to put this into a clip uh, arrangement. It's going to clip to the underlying layer, so it's forming a clipping group. And I do that by holding down the Option or Alt key and clicking in between um, the layer and the uh, underlying layer here. So you can see how the cursor changes. So we click, and you can see now that this has shifted over, and there's a little arrow there pointing uh, at the underlying layer. And this means that this layer will be constrained by the layer mask in this layer, and it will only be affecting this layer. Okay, so we'll change that layer mode to color. And uh, now I, I'm going to go around and colorize this edge. We, we're probably going to want to mask that off at some point, but I'm going to go ahead and colorize it. So I'm going to get the brush tool here, and uh, I'm going to sample from the the area just adjacent to the edge that I want to color. So I hold down the Option or Alt, and the turns into kind of the eyedropper tool here. I'm going to click and sample that color. So you see I now I have that flesh color as my foreground color. And I'm going to just paint. I have to paint with 100% here. So uh, I'm going to paint that edge with the flesh color. And then when I get over to the eyebrow here, I'll sample that eyebrow color. Paint that over here, sample the flesh color for the eyelid, and uh, maybe that eyebrow color again for, for the eyelashes, the flesh color for the nose here, right? So I'm, I just, now maybe the lips, as I get over the lips, I'm going to sample that. Um, 
So we have the red color there. Uh, now here it's interesting because we're getting a little bit of wrap around in the in the color pollution. So this is why I like to do this manually because I can uh, not only just uh, color refine that edge, but I can brush into um, into the interior a bit. So like when I come down here, this shadow is about like is kind of this color. So I'll sample that and uh, brush this in here like that. Uh, this area, you know, maybe it's more like this color. Sample it in here. Okay, so this color now, I've, I've kind of hidden the, the blue pollution with this layer that creates the color effect. And in some cases, sometimes when, when you have a highlight or a shadow, uh, you want this to be a little less saturated. So my strategy then is to get the sponge tool, which is underneath either the burn or the dodge tool. You'll see here sponge tool. And we set that to desaturate in a fairly low flow. And then I can kind of just kind of brush it over the color that I just brushed in until it looks a little more natural. Like over here, I'm going to have to cut, you know, put some flesh color into that chin. But you'll notice that it sometimes it seems a little too saturated um, over the edge as it's as it's kind of wrapping around and it has a little highlight to it. So we'll we'll take the sponge tool there and just kind of just desaturate just a little bit. Okay, and then the fun part is over here in the hair. We've got quite a lot of different colors going on in this hair. Uh, so then I may see some of her hair looking kind of gray. Some of the, the blonde streaks are a little uneven in here. So we may want to adjust that as we go along here. I'm going to sample a hair color and brush this over the hair. So I'm, I'm trying to get the color into the hair wisps. And in this case, you know, I could kind of be fairly loose with it because I'm sampling the hair color and uh, let me get some of that color into the grayer hair anyway. Uh, recolor that blonde hair so it's not quite so garish. Um, you know, kind of work it in. Some of the gray hair is like, it's the hair color is a little uneven. Um, but my goal mainly is, is to uh, sample the hair next to the hair wisps that I want to color. And uh, just make sure that I'm kind of working that color in, into all the hair edges that are exposed. And this ends up working out, most of the time works out a little bit better than using the decontaminate color, especially when you have such, such wispy hair. And here, you know, maybe I want to get it a little more of the color that, of the hair down here. It's a little bit different colored. trying to sample close to the hair, but you can see how uneven the hair color is. So, I'm gonna... so this hair seems a little grayer, so now I've got this color going on here. I might uh, brush in with like 30% opacity and just kind of help to kind of even out the hair color a little bit. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. We've got, we got pretty good hair wisps here. Uh, and what we have going on here, though, is part of the edge of the mask is not as strong or and part is has this little line. So I'd like to eliminate that little line. I'd like to deepen this a bit. Um, so let's let's start by making this a little less transparent. If I look at the layer mask, I'm going to option or alt click on it here. You can see that this section of the mask is kind of gray, and I'd, I'd like that to be stronger, so I want it to be white. So if I want it to be lighter, I'm going to use the Dodge tool and dodge that. I'm going to dodge the highlights and um, turn this little area into solid white instead of gray. So I'm just going to kind of brush into it like that. Now when I come back out of this layer mask, you can see now that's much darker than it was. 
and now I'm going to work on this this little dark edge, getting that to be invisible, and especially up in here. Okay, so the, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take the blur tool and just run it along that edge, and then I'm going to take the burn tool and run it. I'm going to burn shadows here. I have a, my exposure up here around 76 percent. 70, 80% is probably good. And then I'm just going to brush it over that edge a couple of times. You can kind of see that magically it's eliminated that dark line. I'm going to want to do it over here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Now let me show you what's actually happening with that. If I click on the layer mask with Option or Alt to solo the mask, we can see the mask. So when I take the blur tool and run it along that edge, it makes that edge blurrier, right? Then when I take the dodge tool, or the, the burn tool, uh, rather, and rub it along that edge, it sharpens it up again, but it, more importantly, it kind of pushes the edge inward because it's taking the, the blurred edge, it has some gray in it, and it's turning that gray black. So it's actually uh, choking the mask, making the, the black parts spread into the light parts. So we can see the effect of that here as it as I brush the, the, the burn tool over that edge, you can see that dark line disappearing. So this is a, a really nifty way of refining that edge. And you know some areas don't need it. Um, this area does. So I'll run the blur tool and then run the burn tool. So I, I don't necessarily want to do this globally everywhere along the edge, but anywhere where I, where I want to clean up so I, a kind of a dark line. And sometimes the edge is already blurry and you can just clean it up just by running that burn tool over the edge. Um, now in here there's a little, it's like her lips are, are sticky and I kind of like to clean that up. So I'm going to use another technique, um, and that is using the finger tool, the smudge tool. So I'm going to use the smudge tool, and I can literally push from the black part of the mask in. And that's a good way to kind of create a point. And clean, up, clean up the edge of that mask just a little bit. Okay. Uh, all right. So I've done. I've cleaned up my edge. I've got nice detailed hair. All right. So I think I'm ready now to bring this into the other background. But I'm going to create a a group for this because I've got two layers here that I want to pull over. And the easiest way to kind of organize this and get them to be together is to shift click so that we've got both those layers selected. And then I'm going to put them into a group. So I go to my layer options flyaway here and I say new group from layers. Okay. And we'll call this uh, face. Um, close enough. And now this can be dragged using the move tool to place it into the other document. So I'm just going to take the move tool here and click on the head and move it over there and drop it into the new background. And there, there we go. Uh, now, there's a couple of things I'd like to do here. I'd like to um, get the edge of her hair to pick up some of that background color. And uh, I'd also like to flip this background. Let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this into a layer just by double clicking on it. And then I'm going to flip it. Uh, so that we'll do flip horizontal, and that way it puts the light over here. And I'm gonna, I want it to look like this. This sunset light is is catching the edge of the hair and lighting up the edge, and that's gonna help help this look like it's in the background there. Okay, so that's gonna mean I'm gonna need another layer, another sort of colorizing layer above this one, and uh, so we'll take that and we'll. Put in a clipping group again, Option or Alt clicking in between the two layers. So now it's still interacting and, and being constrained by this layer mask. We'll change this to um, we'll do color dodge. 
because I want to light up the edge of the hair here. So I'll take the brush tool here and we'll sample uh, this red sunset color here. And I'm going to change my opacity to 10% because I want to kind of do this gradually. And I'm going to kind of brush it now over the hair edges here. And you can kind of see it's now, it's, it's lightening the hair edge and also giving it a little bit of this, this kind of uh, reddish color to make it look a little bit more like it's being backlit at least a little bit. So that makes it look like it's, uh, it's being lit by the, the sunset. All right, so, so far so good. Now, uh, I think if, if we look at this, here's without the colorize, you can see the, the blue edges of the hair. So the hair, we need to have those colorizing layers. But let's, let's take a look at this because in this masking process, although it's, it's very good, it's not, it's sort of, we've eliminated some detail in the hair. Let me, let me disable this layer mask. And you can see, actually, there's a lot of extra stuff going on in this hair that, that gets masked off, right? Um, so disable the layer mask, and you can kind of see extra wisps that have been eliminated. So I'm going to share with you a little trick for bringing those back. And it's going to require me to make a new copy of this layer. So I'm going to do that by option uh, dragging this outside of the group. So I'll hold down option or alt and drag it and so that it comes above the group. And you see that how that little line gets a little bit darker that's right above the group. And so now I have this, this, uh, this a copy of the original layer above this group. I'm going to throw away the layer mask because so we don't need it. All right, so I want to get back at these these hair wisps, but I don't want this blue color. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at, you know, see, see the red channel doesn't have any detail in the hair wisp. The green channel has a lot of detail, and the blue channel similarly doesn't have any detail. So it, for this color, we're going to use the green channel. Okay, so I'm going to make a channel mixer adjustment here. And we're going to clip that so that it's it's just attacking that one layer and doesn't apply to the rest of the, of the background. And the way a shortcut to doing that is to click on this little icon here, which is uh, the click to clip <laughs> icon. So we click on that. And now you can see that the this channel mixer is is just affecting this layer. And we're going to use the black and white with green filter, and that gives us the green um, channel. It makes a black and white image. So bear with me now, uh, because what I want to do now is I want to change the blend mode for this layer, which has been turned into black and white. I want to change that to hard light. But I like this area. See how this area is a little darker? The reason that's screening or, or kind of multiplying over the background to make it darker is that it's a bit darker than middle gray. In a hard light layer, middle gray would be 128, and that would be completely transparent. So let's let's see if we can't make that more like middle gray at 128. So I'm going to get a curve in there. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, let me curve it after the uh, channel mixer, and I'm going to I want this area next to the hair wisps here. And I want that to read, we're going to look up the RGB numbers here. So I'm just going to put my cursor there and use my arrow keys to lift that value until it says 128. And you'll notice that this darkening effect is getting less and less dark. And it's going to pretty much go away when we get up to 128. So you can see it sort of disappearing. And there's a bit of noise in this layer, but... Uh, at 128, 
that pretty much kind of becomes transparent. Now, I don't really care about this size. We're picking up a little noise because this was from scanned film. You're probably not going to have that kind of a problem with the files you might be using. Uh, and now I'm going to mask off the edges that show here, and I'm going to mask off this side, which shows all the noise. And we're going to put a layer mask here and mask off that whole layer. So, so now I'm brushing into this layer mask, and you can kind of see I'm getting that that sort of outside edge to disappear. I'm just going to kind of brush up close to the hair wisps here. And now I'm going to go ahead and mask this off entirely. And we, we're seeing the, the color image underneath this. And my goal here is actually get these hair wisps to be under the other face. So I'm going to make a group here, selecting these layers. We'll put it, make it a new group, and we'll call this Wisps. I'm going to pull the Wisps underneath the face group. Okay, so there's the Wisps, right? Let's turn on the colorizing layers. And we can see now that all these extra, all the wisps that got kind of eliminated from the original mask show up. And now I just need to get those to be colorized. So let's let's do that. I'm going to take another layer in the same clipping group arrangement here. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll make this um, we'll make this a solid color layer. So I'm going to make a new solid color layer. And I'm going to clip that. So I hold down Option or Alt and click in, in, between, in between the two layers. Uh, let's, let's, yeah, let, we'll leave that color because that's probably close to the, the previously sampled background color. And you can see now it's just being applied normally. We're going to change that to color. Or uh, perhaps perhaps overlay would be good. And now for the final trick, you can see it's colorizing everything, including um, the the background, which is now no longer gray. Where I'm, I'm colorizing that, but let's let's constrain this to just the lighter parts, which are the hair wisps. So. Pretty tricky. We're going to double click this, the empty part in between that layer, and that pulls up the layer style dialog. But we're going to use uh, the blend if area of this to blend out this red color from hitting the gray background. So let's pull this up to 128. And you can start to see that it's starting to. Uh, come off of that gray background. We're going to go to, it looks like 130 here, and then I'm going to split this because what happens is it makes a hard transition and I want to make a soft transition to the gray background. So hold down Option or Alt and split that triangle and you can kind of see now that it kind of blends in and applies more just to the lighter, the lighter hair wisps. Okay, and we have now this kind of red color for the hair wisps that are lit by the sunset. Uh, and we can double click on this color, the solid color layer, which is being applied in overlay mode. We can double click on it and edit the color. So we can make it maybe a little more orangey. Um, little darker maybe so it's not quite so now it sort of blends in with uh, the colorizing that we've done over the hair all right well that was <laughs> that was perhaps a little complicated but uh, for those of you that could follow along I've given you given you some very cool little tricks here to bring back the hair wisps and uh, and to use the new mask uh, and uh, uh, select and mask dialog all right. Well,
play this back a couple of times and uh, you, you have a lot of uh, material in this little tutorial to learn. Uh, be sure and follow me on uh, on Facebook and uh, on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel where I give away a lot of these little tutorials. So uh, I will uh, see you on the flip side in the next tutorial. All right. Have a good one.